Welcome to our usual hovers. I'm Economica, and today I can play for the game The Trial Instant, where we join the mysterious Detective Corvus as we try to unravel the truth behind the Trial Instant. There is only darkness. This is it. This is everything life has led up to. The nothing at the end of it all. It feels oddly cathartic. The void absorbs me, washing away my fears and woes in its cold embrace. I hope to sink further into the feeling. But then I see it. The figure is hazy, as if it's being seen through a fog of barely recalled dreams. The body is still, tall, with a set of brown robes and a pair of thick rimmed glasses framing its face. The figure smiles, face formed into a friendly and inviting grin, one filled with warmth, trust even. He beckons me to come closer. To greet him. I hesitate, for I do not recognize him, and the void remains ever consuming. The figure's face contorts. A small red gem appears on its head, and they begin to glow, a crimson light flooding my vision, assailing my entire being. It burns the darkness away. Why don't you snap out of it already? Oh, Jesus Christ, I think I died. A hard slap across the face stings my right cheek. You're still breathing, and I got some questions that need answering, so get up. The second slap stings the opposite cheek and jolts me awake. Welcome back, Professor. Hope that little nap you had was at least mildly pleasant. A trench coated man has brought me up to my feet. A number of grey hairs peek out from his brown fedora. He wears a strange black scarf, decorated with a crow's face, to obscure his mouth. We stand in the middle of an empty classroom. The windows are open, letting in the moonlight to help illuminate our surroundings. They also show a strange obscurity just outside. Peeking just outside the farthest window, a beam of red light seems to jut out into the sky. A towering beacon of great energy that tints everything near in a violent scarlet. I see you've noticed the big red light coming outside as well. By your lucky confusion, seems like you don't know jack about it. Sorry for the rude awakening. Also seems I'm proper to not even introduce myself yet. Name's Corvus, Detective Corvus of the EEA. I came here after I heard reports of an anomaly coming from the campus hub a few hours ago. I've tried asking around for advice, but I couldn't find anybody till I happened upon you. You happen to have a name or know what's going on? I can't remember my name or anything really. Damn, can't remember anything? You may be suffering from some sort of memory loss. Figured as much, since you were not silly when I found you. Considering you don't seem to know what's going on, here's the situation. Judging by your robes, you are, were a professor at Alterior Academy. It's a fancy smancy private college for the magical elite of Altunia. Now I never attended this place, but I'm assuming that you folk don't go every day conjuring menacing beams into the sky. I mean, we could do for all you know. Maybe they're just not that impressive usually. Oh, maybe we got a court on campus and we wanted to summon a god. Much less allowing your professors to lose their members in the middle of a semester. Now I know it's asking a lot, but I need you to go round and find some survivors of the blast. Gather some information as well if you can. The sooner we're both in the loop, the better. Did you just make me your sidekick? Then again, that makes sense. You do have the main character Fedora, so... You know what? I'm in. I'll do it. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. The detective gives a solemn nod of approval. Nice to know we're on the same page here. Go see if you can find anyone else in the area. Check in on them. Ask a couple questions and see if you can get something useful. I'll explore the campus a bit more as well. Got a lead from a trusted source. There's something of interest on the other side of the campus. A certain 
big shot named Kellum Trier. I'll be convened with you here in an hour or so. See you soon. With that, the detective envelops himself within his scarf, suddenly turning into a small black bird as he flies out an open window. Wait, he can shift into a bird? Terribly sorry, detective. You've just made yourself my mortal enemy. All birds must die. He starts to fly off to the southern end of the college, getting that much closer to the red light, until he veers left towards the student dorms. I've got a question. Do we think the beam of light has any kind of gravitational pull? I reckon Detective Corvus should fly a little bit closer, test it out for us. I'm afraid he may die, but that is a risk I'm willing to take. After he leaves, I take a look down at myself to take a brief inventory. I seem to be wearing a dark purple robe and a long sash of white and gold over my shoulders. Shoulder length hair blankets itself over my face. I try to scavenge around for a weapon to arm myself with, but unfortunately, there's not much to use. The classroom is empty of anything useful. It was a happy occurrence the detective managed to wake me up, but I can't help but wonder if he made the right call. Not to mention, not having any idea who the figure in my dream was, or who that person the detective mentioned is. But that's beside the point. I make my way toward the exit and decide to do what I can to help. The hallway is seemingly covered head to toe in books, all varying in terms of height, heft and design. Maybe I can arm myself with some books then. I mean, if they've got a decent heft to them, they should be good bludgeoning weapons, right? Many have fallen to the ground and littered the floor. Before me, I can really only see three different areas to go to. If only I could understand what the detective would do in this situation. Oh, I get to play as both characters. Nice. Well, unfortunately... I'm still upset that you're a bird detective, so I'm going to play as a professor. If I really am a professor, I've got to believe in my own abilities. A scream is heard from one of the rooms. I shake out the fort. Realizing that my assistance is needed now, I dash off, trying to find where the scream originated from. You know what? I've got a good feeling about classroom number three. Well, hi there. You seem to be a little bit deceased. Oh, but you do have those same red gems. Hello? Mind if I ask a few questions? Uh, Professor... Everything all right? You'll have to forgive me. The explosion gave me some kind of amnesia. So if I knew you, I forgot. I hope you'll forgive me. Okay then. Ask away. I feel it may be important to start at the basics. So what's your name? Then again, also getting to the point might have been a good idea. You know what? No, I was going to ask for your name. Hildy, do you really not remember me? Sat in the back of your class. Really good student. <laughs> no, like I said, I have amnesia. Yeah, but it can't have wiped all of your memories. There's like 27 different types of amnesia. Retrograde amnesia, traumatic amnesia, psychogenic amnesia, elemental amnesia, revival amnesia. Well, yeah, they're all real things. Some of them sound fake. I mean, what the hell is an elemental amnesia? Okay, I get it. You know a thing or two. Maybe I knew what some of those meant before, but right now I do not and I don't think terminology is going to suddenly unlock my memory palace. I guess not. Figured you might want to know anyways. Okay, fine. Let's hear your theories about my amnesia. Perfect. The current magical consensus on amnesia 
is pretty divided. But given that we have a good idea of the source of the trauma, we might be able to figure out how it works. Can you remember anything about your childhood? Yes, of course I can. Wait, we can? But we don't remember our own name. That takes it down to 16 possibilities. And your memory post-accident seems fine. As far as I can tell. Then you probably have. Let's see. Hmm. You know, it's harder than I thought to figure this out. Maybe that's because you've got germs embedded in your brain. Makes it hard to think, you know? That and you kind of look a little bit deceased. I would probably have to focus and draw out the information. Sorry for the sudden change, but I have a headache. I just can't be bothered. That's alright. It's important, I know. I just... Really, it's fine. Let's move on. Okay, so do we want to know about before the event? Or what happened? Maybe if there's anything that led up to the event. So before the event, did you notice anything strange at the academy? No. I've been kind of busy with my studies and all. I see. You must have been one of my straight-A students then. Uh, well, yeah, let's go with that. Well, let me guess. If I'm to believe you're my straight-A student, if I find any notes contradicting that, you want me to change your grade, right? Something wrong? Okay, fine. I was failing your class. Is that what you wanted to hear? Um, I didn't mean it like that. There is nothing more important to me than the expansion of humanity's knowledge, magical and scientific. After we get wiped off this planet by Atom Bob or by Satan's summoning, it's all we have to leave behind. I know that. I know how important it is. I really do. But I just can't do it. There's nothing more demotivating than boring than the pursuit of knowledge. And I can even muster the bare minimum effort required to learn. I tried to study. I really did. But my eyes would glaze over. The page would turn to a blur. And I would forget a sentence. I swear I just read. How can it be that this thing I value most in the entire world I'm utterly incapable of doing. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't help you. Whatever. Ask me something else. Anything else. Or are we done here? Hmm. Well, Kellum was important. You know what? I feel like the detective is going to deal with Kellum, so why don't we just ask about what happened? Yes, I do. And? I won't speak without my attorney present. Oh, so you're worried you're going to implicate yourself, huh? You know, this is a school, right? I might have amnesia, but I wasn't born yesterday. Students don't have rights, and you know it. Fine. Where should I start? What happened to your, um, head? This one's my fault. I was willing to do anything to get smarter. 
And I guess studying just wasn't cutting it. Shut up! Like you would understand. You've probably always been able to study. Don't look down on me like that. Uh, sorry, this headache is killing me. Should we tell her that I'm pretty convinced she's already dead? What happened to the school? Some kind of explosion. Not sure what caused it, but I was in my room at the time. And what were you doing in your room? I played the... Right. I already waived my rights. This is probably going to get out anyways. So I'll be honest. I was working on a potion, the results of which you can already see. Not sure the explosion messed with it while it was in progress, but it didn't exactly go to plan. As you have probably already ascertained. Do you know anything about me? I'm trying to figure out how I fit into all of this. Well, you're a professor at this academy. That much you already understand. Yes? Yeah, the detective gave me a brief rundown. And the clothes helped convince me. What kind of teacher was I? Well, I can't exactly give you an unbiased review, but I would say slightly above average. I'm still not exactly satisfied with my education here, but at least you seemed like you cared. Anything else, or are we done here? Any idea where Kellum went? No. I talked with him before this mess. He seemed in a hurry. I think he was planning something big. As for what it was, or where it's happening, I can't really help you. Sorry. No, it's alright. I've actually learned a lot from talking with you. Thanks. Anything else? Or are we done here? If there's anything I can do to help. You talked before about how important knowledge was to you. I think it's important too. But it's nothing to beat yourself up about. If there's anything I can do to help. Or if you just want to talk about it. Really? Going to try to be my therapist. I have the combined sum of all publicly available academic knowledge on magic and psychology in my head. What could you possibly say that I don't already know? That I understand? What? How could you understand? Not only do you have a job passing on knowledge, you also seem to genuinely enjoy you work. I was like you too. I still am to some degree. There are things that I thought were really important to me, but I just couldn't find the motivation to do it. I wanted to be a hallowed artificer when I was younger. I trained hard for it, but even early on I knew I didn't have the chops for it. In the end, I settled for teaching. Not just because it was important, but because I saw myself in that role. It's not just about what you want to happen in the world. You owe it to yourself to see where you fit in that picture too. Thanks. I feel that, like that uh, advice a bit too late now, that she's already embedded the knowledge in crystals, right? Where to now? Let's just work our way backwards, so how about classroom two? 
Wow, you guys seem to be, um, bonded. No, no, no. It can't. This wasn't how this was supposed to go. As much as I'd like to agree, denying the situation does not help in the slightest. Then what am I supposed... Uh, hello? Ah, Professor! Uh, my apologies. I, uh... I didn't mean to startle you. Um... Sorry. Who are you... Two? Who am... How do you not know my name? It's several months into the term. Then again, in all fairness, I doubt I'd be recognizable in this state. Hmm, I guess that's true. You may have known me. I mean us, as Stephanie Papillion and Olivia Mendrich. But for the time being, you can refer to me as Stylvia, I suppose. Stylvia, really? I'm not good at thinking on the spot, alright? Do you have any better suggestions? Fine, it'll bite. Alright, Miss Stitch. Can you tell me what happened? To be honest, I don't know. I'm still in the middle of processing everything that happened, so I can't offer more than a general description. Even a general description will suffice. You don't need to be so formal with me. I'd rather you be as comfortable as possible. Oh, okay. Well, all that I know what happened was that it was a pretty normal day until BOOM! There was a sudden flash of red light. The next thing I know, I turned into this. I don't know any more than that. Do you know how this happened? That's exactly what I've been trying to figure out. You think I have any ideas here? That said, I can make an educated guess. Feel free to share it. I think it may have something to do with this catalyst on my body. Catalyst? You mean this gem? Yes. How did you get it? That is a long story. Take your time. Okay, so... The short of it is... Callum gave it to me. He gave it to you? As a gift? I think so. It was more like... We asked him for it. We approached him one day, asking for advice on how he can fit in with different social environments. When I, I mean we, were separate, we fitted well with our own social niches, but struggled to fit in anywhere else. Stephanie was a social butterfly with many friends, but struggled to discuss academic subjects with anyone. Olivia, on the other hand, could hold her own in academic presentations and discussions but could never function in a casual conversation. Wait, so he gave you a gem that bonded both of your strengths together? Kellum seemed to thrive in any conversation, academic or casual, so we asked him some advice. In response, he gave us both this catalyst, promising that it would give us the other's best qualities. It's would be as if we were the same person. I see. What about the other students? Had you perhaps come across Callum? No, I haven't seen him after the incident. Where do you think he is now? If anyone among us had any idea, it would be you. More often than not, I would see him hanging out with you, chatting it up like good old chums. He just seemed more comfortable around you. I see. I think that's all the questions I have for you at the moment. Oh, well, when you see Callum, give him my regards. Given how he's looked lately, 
I think he could use some. I will. Goodbye, Sylvia. Well, they seem close now. Let's pop to classroom one. Oh, hi there, buddy. You are very red. Excuse me. Mind if I... Oh, by the stars! No, Puffat. Um, okay. Hello to you too. So, can you tell me your name? You know Reiko me? Pardon? You know Reiko me. Reiko? No, my apologies. I do not recognize you. No, Blem. Nem, I see. Um, Nem? Isaac! I. Isaac! Yeah! Alright, Isaac, got it! Now, I would like to ask you some questions, but, um, uh, how should we go about this? Me want to ask you. Can understand clear? You can understand everything I'm saying. Every word. Ah, uh, firm. I see. Could it be that your body is causing you to struggle to speak? Correct. Ah, uh, my apologies then. Okay, so wouldn't it be better if we start asking like yes or no questions? Where's the fun in that? Let's just ask open questions. Can you tell me what happened here? Not much. Boom. Red light. Then pain. Body. Morph. This. That. All. I see. That must have been pretty sudden. What else should I ask Isaac? I mean, I feel like we know the answer to how this happened to you, right? I mean, he got hit by the crimson light and transformed. I'll ask you regardless, how did this happen to you? Cattle in body, likely. Oh, so you had a catalyst as well. Then again, everything seems to be fooled by those red gems, right? Cattle? So you've been eating an excess amount of beef? Oh. Oh, I'm ashamed of us. We did not link it up to the catalyst, did we? No. Catalyst. Catalyst? You mean a catalyst? Yeah. How did you get it? Let me guess. You got given it. Kellum. Kellum gave it to you. Dirty trick. Can you elaborate? Hello, always best. All I get, great work, effort, not matter. Kellum, always shadow. All cause Kellum, good luck. So you were jealous of Kellum because he always overshadowed you through his good looks? will admit envy but one day Callum give cattle said will make me as good look as him Callum offered you the catalyst saying it would make you as good looking as he is but skeptic but decide to humor Small effect at first, but after light turned to this. Oh, so whatever the red light was, it affected the catalyst to emphasize the results? You were initially skeptical, but decided to humor him. The catalyst had small effects at first, but after the instant you turned into what you are now. Is that right? Yeah. Sick joke. No, forgive. I'm sorry to hear that. 
What now should I ask Isaac? Where is Kellogg? Don't know. No. See him. When wake. I see. My advice. Stay away. You don't want me to pursue Kellogg. Why is that? Saw him with you often. Must want favor. No fall for lie. I will proceed with caution then. I think that's all the questions I have for you at the moment. Take care. Where to now? I reckon we're done here. But wait, which one of them screamed? Guess it's about time to meet with the detective. So, this is the room in question. Smells like wet up. Uh, otherwise, it seems to be about half of the course. In fact, it's rather tidy given the current state of the university. Let's start by taking a look around. What should I look at? Ooh, ingredients on the table. But well, we did hear mentions of uh, potions, right? Huh. I was not expecting dog food. Is that a tongue? Ingredients, it seems. And not the kind you cook with. Well, I suppose you could cook with this one. But the rest are medicinal at best. Let's see here. Dog war, nilly weed, griffin's tongue, and snail urine. Oh, mainstays in the wizarding pharmaceutical industry. But not exactly household names. Not that they are hard to get your hands on. They can all be extracted from stuff you can get out over the counter at any wizard clinic worth its summoning soul. What should I look at? How about we go nosy through the bookshelf then? Let's see. Anything interesting? Legal history of transmorphication. Counterinductive spell structures for undergrads. Notes of the use of spark spells in general combat. Decent study material. But none of it is particularly relevant to the case at hand. Hmm. This one seems interesting. Caster in the Rye. It was required reading in my magic school, but I can't imagine it's part of any modern curriculum. Not that it means anything on its own, but let's just hope it doesn't identify with the main character too much. Ah, here's something different. Oh, please be a grimoire. I think it is! Oh, it's beautiful and very fleshy. Skill Improvement 7th Edition. These books are supposed to be banned from university. They use enchanted ink to automatically improve your magical aptitude. Useful for improving work and productivity, but it doesn't transfer any base knowledge of how the magic works. Now, why would Kellen have something like this? Well, like, we did get told he was always the best, right? Maybe he isn't actually as smart as everyone is saying? Perhaps the cult of personality around him has gotten out of hand. Maybe he never was as smart as they said. I would be surprised if he lasted this long. But again, now I think about it, he did procure resources for other people, right? They were mainly catalysts. But I guess it benefits no one in this university to reveal their best student as a fraud. What should I look at? Well, down to the spilled ink then. Spilled ink on the table. A classic question of causality. Of all the thousands of possible actions, not to mention the addition of spells, incantations, embodiments, enchantments and all the rest. Out of all those, I have to narrow it down to a single. Huh. Could Callum transform into a dog? Is that why there was dog food? Oh, it seems he has a dog. Well, I guess not everything has to be an enigma. It seems this ferocious beast has left a trail all the way back to its den. The lower copy of the autobiography section opens copy. Dog growls. Well met familiar. May I ask what you're sitting on? 
the dog growls again. I see. I won't make any headway with you by just asking nicely. Maybe if I can find a can that isn't empty, he'll open up to me. What should I look at? Go back to the ingredients then, they ain't got dog food. Well, I bet I can get that dog to hand over the book he's protecting for the little state-sponsored Barbara. Feels bold with food. Hey, butter, don't you want some food? Dog growls. Huh, I guess he only eats the good stuff. Let's see what we can do for the spoiled mutt. Closes the cubby. Just a quick little spot, and we are good to go. Do you really think he's gonna buy this? Alright, I got you the good stuff this time. You like curio, don't you? Look, I got a fresh new can of it for you. The dog is excited. Oh, he really is gonna forfeit. Oh, he's got bow. Precious. The dog eats it excitedly. Perfect. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna borrow this dog bed from you. Doesn't particularly comfortable anyhow. Oh, I take it back, that's our grimoire. Well, I'll be. I believe we found the smoking wand. Dark arts, summoning demons, transforming flesh, etc, etc. Oh, that sounds like a fun book. Now the kind of stuff you get into freshman year. These are some real, I knew them before they were cool type spells. He would need access to some seriously twisted study materials to come up with these kind of spells. How exactly would he get a hold of that? Do you reckon he got it from me? I mean, he did say we were, he was being, I was hanging around with him a lot, right? Oh, I, I reckon it's gonna be me. I find it hard to believe that he could have infiltrated the school's archives. Modern Gollum security systems have made that much more difficult than it was in the past. I'm not sure why, but it's possible someone who had access themselves could have given it to him. Either way, it's put those ingredients into context. It's no simple potion he was working on. Nothing in this book would be as benign as that. Here we go. Page 478. Ingredients required. Dogwort, snail urine, griffin's tongue, and a bunch of other stuff he would be unable to find. The problem I'm having is that this doesn't exactly look explosive in nature, at least not like we've been seeing around the school. Could he be working on something else? Something even worse. Well, I just hope that Fessor found something useful. The sound of my footsteps echo throughout the chambers. Each step gets me ever closer to the great hall. The classrooms are empty. No other student or professor in sight. The night is still. Outside, the silver moon lays bare. Alone, it is unfazed by any clouds. Its glow provides much needed vision for the detective and I. You sure you know where you're going? I doubt we have the time to be making any sort of detour. I don't even bother giving him a response. I can't afford to waste what breath I still have. I may not be 100% just yet, but for some reason, this university comes to me naturally. This is the right way. My cloak flaps along in the breeze. The sweat begins to build on the back of my neck, along the creases of my aged brow. Surprisingly, the detective keeps in pace with me. He of course remains calm and cool. Finally, I'm here. You know, you don't have to do this. I can go in there myself, tuck some sense into the kid. Can't promise that I'll see reason, but hey, who knows? Day has only been getting crazier by the minute. But just in case anything does happen, I gotta warn you. You'll do what it need to do. I'm not looking to see this get any worse than it already has. 
I mean, I can understand that. We've already exploded and caused three human student transformations. He's a liability now. He must be terminated. And I must protect my own involvement. He's a liability now. He must be terminated. The words come out of my mouth slow and devoid of emotion. They are calculated and precise. It makes the third flinch ever so slightly. He lets the words hang there, out in the open, until he takes in a deep breath. Well then, glad we got that sorted out. With that, he walks forward, pushing open the heavy door. I can only hope that he's all really listened to what I said. The light is blinding at first. A harsh and violent red stains the entire room. My coat pulls away from me, blasted by the enormous force of power coming from the anomaly. The sight before me is hard to make out. The beam continuously blasts and juts out of the ground. The room is being completely annihilated, with the debris scattered everywhere. The guests stand aimlessly, their eyes tinted crimson, their faces blank without emotion. They all stare at the light, fixated on its bright allure. I try to shake one of them out of it, to bring them back to reality. But it's no use. They remain incapacitated, thralls to whatever is happening here. And standing right next to the beam, standing only a few feet away from its immense power, is Kellum. He turns his head as we inch out ever closer, and it's apparent that he is the only one with a resemblance of sentience in the room. The detective makes his move first, pulling out his magic wand from his trench pocket. Hold it right there! Detective Corvus of the EEA! I need you to stop whatever the hell you're doing and come with me! But the request seems to fall on dead ears, as Kellogg turns only to look at me. Professor Lortelia, you don't know how happy I am to see you. You, you'll be able to fix all of this. My journal's right here. Just take it. Please, I don't want it anymore. The notebook is quite obviously torn and tattered. It's been beaten to smithereens, yet some of the pages are still left intact. Opening it, the general's faded ink seems all but indecipherable. You have no idea how to discern the words and phrases being used in this hectic handwriting. Okay, well, Kellogg, you should explain. What am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do with this? I point to the half-destroyed piece of literature in my hands. I can't hide the fear in my voice as I question Kellum. My lack of confidence doesn't inspire any in him either. What do you mean? You gave me Caliponius the journal. You were the one that caused this. I knew it. If I'd never listened to you. Detective Corva stands idly by, watching things unfold from the side. A keen observer, his wand remains primed and ready in his hands. Oh no, don't tell me. Did you forget how this all started? Why we're here? Temporary amnesia, perhaps? Or maybe some sort of vain attempt to rid yourself of suspicion? I must admit, Professor Lotalia, you are much more cunning than I even thought. Hmm. I really forgot everything. Your spell was the cause. Preposterous! If what I did managed to disturb you so harshly, I couldn't imagine. Your little presentation shook the entire damn university. That tremor did quite the number on a variety of different experiments for miles around. Wouldn't it be much of a pull to say your beloved professor here was an unfortunate casualty of your dabbling with forbidden literature? You damn it! This was never supposed to happen! The fire in Kellum's eyes seemed to die down, 
His fury is starting to fill with a deep sense of regret. Thank you, Detective. Detective Corbus merely gives a sideward glance. His expression shows a cold and emotionless figure. What devoid of emotion. Don't you dare think you're out of the woods yet. You'll be getting your fair shake after this, amnesia or not. Oh, we have not avoided suspicion then. Kellum, what's going on? What happened? Kellum stares to the side for a moment, carefully determining what his next word should be. All I wanted to do was be Grand Scholar again. The spell was supposed to be my magnum opus. One more lasting hurrah, you would say. Something to cement my legacy in the halls of Anteria Academy. I was to prove the fables of Calpurnia the mad-blooded were not just works of fiction and ancient Alternian propaganda. Professor Lotalia entrusted me with deciphering the traitorous mage's notes. They said that solving the writing of Copernia's spellbook could lead to the final deduction needed to see what compelled people to join her cause. I was proven correct in my initial hypothesis. Copernia did use enthrallment spells to compel her army to her cause. My initial experiment was only meant to target a ferocious and terribly tempered mutt. But as you can see, Kellum gestures to the crowd of hundreds of people in an elongated stupa before the three of us. In the end, I failed. The spell was too powerful to control properly, and now everyone here is suffering from my hubris. I was the one that caused this whole ordeal. And I wish for nothing more than this horrible nightmare to end. And you want to know the worst part? I don't know how to reverse any of this. They're stuck, and this damn ritual refuses to dissipate. There is an obvious anger in his voice, and frustration that he has not yet managed to out what he's doing. But also beneath that, you hear something else from the ragged. Concern. The detective turns to face me, disbelief in his eyes. What? Under all seven divides, compelled you to do such a thing? Given a no-name teacher's pet something bitter by Ender of the Silver Age. Hmm. What would get us out get us out of trouble, do we reckon? Um You know what? I'm just gonna go into Amnesia. I wish I could tell you, Detective, but, uh, Amnesia, remember? I point to the side of my head, hoping it helps paint a better picture of my unfortunate predicament. That was nowhere near the answer I wanted to hear. You lousy, good for nothing, private school babysitter. I chuckled to myself a little, realizing I finally got under the detective's skin. Callum smirks ever so slightly at the outburst. The enthralled audience remained unamused. Okay, detective. What do we do now? The detective takes a moment to gather his thoughts, contemplating what must be a number of different variables and outcomes within his mind. With a sigh of contention, the detective steps forward ever so certainly. He seems to cast a spell that affects the singular culprit. Something in my brain identifies the spell near immediately. A truth cantrip ensuring Kellum doesn't bother to try and deceive him. Seems that the both of you have gotten yourself into quite a conundrum. Speaking as an unbiased third party. I'm sorry, but do I know you? Heh, <laughs> probably not. But I sure do know a lot about you. Callum Trap, best student I'd say Academy has ever seen. Perfect grades, great looks, charming personality. No wonder you've been awarded a Grand Scholar for a momental three years running. Wherever you're going with this, just come out and say it. This little play of yours is getting rather tiresome. 
See ya ain't one for small talk. Shame, especially since I know so much about ya. It's surprising how much you can learn about a person from the way they live. You went through my dorm room? I swear if you harmed even a single hair on Bo's little head, I'll... I didn't harm your precious dog. I did, however, come across quite the collection. Items of interest I'd like to ask you about, if you'd be so kind. Oh! Do we want to question, suspect, or accuse? You know what? I'm going to accuse. Let's start with your little supplementary reading. A certain text named Skill Improvement 7th Edition. Well, isn't it obvious? Knowledge is power. And when power gains you nothing but respect and revelry in our world, well then, there's no reason not to take it when you can. Wait, how did you... A hex of truth-saying. And I didn't even notice it until now. Clever plan, Detective. Let's just keep with the accusation, shall we? What about the Dark Arts book? Don't think compliments would get you out of this one. Now, the Dark Arts book. Explain it. Now! Huh? Do you mean the one written by the deserter of Artunia herself? Well, I merely took it while no one was looking. This whole ordeal was merely a minor setback. Now that I plan on finishing what I started. As in Calpurnia, desert of Artunia, the revolutionary that nearly destroyed our great nation. You attempted to recast one of her spells for glorified talent show. Callum doesn't say anything, but he flinches. His pride obviously hurting from the accusatory tone of the detective. Well then, based on what I gathered, there can really only be one conclusion to all of this. Caleb Trier, you are under arrest for crimes against the country of Altunia, for bright and blatant hearsay. Come with me now. The detective already has his wand out and brimming with power. If he tries to retaliate, Caleb doesn't stand a chance. The Callum just stands there, eyeing the detective up and down. And it's obvious that the young student is foolhardy enough to challenge the veteran. I won't let you ruin this for me. I can figure this out. I just need more time. Callum makes a move for his own wand, preparing to cast a spell. But the detective is one step ahead of him. Corvus is only a syllable, or so faster but it's enough to guarantee him the victor, unless something happens. If I let it happen, does that mean I get out scot-free? You know what? I'm gonna let it happen! Kotora! It takes less than a second for the shot to find its target. It goes through his body in an instant. Kellum, wide-eyed, slowly lowers his head to the black smear, now adorning his chest directly to the heart. Kellum crumples to the ground, the glow in his gem slowly fading away. He lies motionless, on the stage of the theatre, dropping face first on the ground with a sickly thud. The detective remains silent for a moment, as the eyes the victim and sits with the knowledge that he has taken a life. It's most likely not his first, and most certainly won't be his last. I'm sorry you had to witness that. I could tell that both of you were close. My condolences. It's fine. I don't even remember him. He can't even look me in the eyes when he says it. Slowly, the red beam in the sky starts to disappear. And one by one, each enthralled guest falls to the ground, suddenly regaining consciousness soon after. The detective begins talking to each of the people affected cobbling them to the proper help and accommodating them however he can. Anything to avoid the dead college student at the stage front. I walk up to the lying body of Kellogg, unsure of how to process all of this. On the one hand, he was a student of mine, a gifted prodigy, destined for great things. But on the other, he was foolish to even attempt to fight. I just stare at his lifeless body. The worst part 
is that I can't remember anything about why I liked him. Why we were so close. The justification for why I feel so empty. Seeing him lying there. Was he misguided? Overambitious? Sure, but he had talent, heart, and skill. And now all I can do is stand aside and wait. Wait and wonder if I could have done anything to save such a young soul from such a gruesome fate. Ah, I found the bad ending. Does this mean I still got arrested? I have amnesia, you know, I remember nothing. Oh, we got four endings. I'm gonna assume that one is us pushing Corvus, right? To avoid Kellum dying. Actually, going back to the first choice, do you think an ending would be if we just try and avoid helping? Why me? Well, for one, I'd benefit you greatly to return to being your usual self. And for another, I'd assume that most witnesses, like your students, won't trust you more than some random EEA detective. It's a mutual benefit for both of us. Means you'll come back to normal sooner, and that I'll be getting paid quicker. Okay, I'll do it. Ah, so no, there was no way to get out of helping him, right? So I wonder if, like, any of these answers will affect our endings. So I mean, maybe, like, picking the first one would help make Kellum more redeemable. You know what, I'm gonna try this one. It was rash of me to trust such a corrupted mind with the Academy's most precious secrets. My words come out quickly, yet the disappointment in my voice echoes throughout the Grand Hall for all to hear. Well then, dear Professor, I can help make sure that such a mistake never happens again. Let's just try and intervene, shall we? Because I'm pretty sure this should save his life and give us a different ending. Koto! I push Corvus in the last possible moment, deflecting his aim to a nearby pillar. A bolt of harsh blue lightning strikes the column, lighting the horde for a brief moment before the blow dissipates. Before the detective is able to say anything else, Kellum retaliates, casting the same spell straight as his assailant. El Corvus Cortara! A bright red thunderbolt flies into the chest of the detective, lighting his body in a horrendous and brutal fashion. Oh! You know, it only just dawned on me that by intervening... Yeah, we just killed the detective! But then again, he is a bird, so... I feel no remorse. His body convulses, twitching every other moment until his body finally relaxes. His eyes roll back into his skull, and his scarf slowly dissipates into the shadows. You know, for a moment there, I thought you were going to allow him to kill me. But I knew you'd come through in the end, Professor Lotalia, just like you always do. So, what do you say we finally finish this and get it over with? See this through to the end. Oh, well, there's had two of the endings, maybe. You know what? Sure, Callum, why not? You likely don't remember it, but when you first gave me Capronia's journal, I remember vividly saying that I wouldn't disappoint you. It's rather cathartic to know that I've kept my word all this time. With that, Kellum pulls out his wand and utters a single phrase, almost as a whisper. Zentra! My body freezes in place, eyes facing forward, so I can only see Kellum and the beacon he's made. You know, when we first set out to alter this incantation, to lower its potency to make it more ethical, I never had any real intention of doing any of that. What I wanted, what I really wanted, was to push myself, to see just how far I could go without breaking, see if I could cast a spell made by the mad betrayer herself. Remake history. Kellum steps ever closer to the portal, his red hue slowly becoming darker and darker as he proceeds to his torrential arcane potency. 
and lo and behold, it went perfectly. All I needed was time. Time for this beacon to harmonize with the surrounding area so that I could enthrall every li living being within the school and the nearby town. But then, you and your little detective friend here just had to try and intervene, had to try and stop me. And I mean, well, look where it got him. But I'll reward your loyalty in the end, at least partially. I cannot say I am not benevolent ruler. Professor Lotalia, if I should ever call you that still, will be the first honorary member to join me in my conquest of Ortunia. Ah, you seem to have gone mad, sir. It is my thanks for helping me start a new era. I would never have gotten here without you. The beam is now a sickly opaque black. Kellogg steps forward into its jutting beam and it absorbs him eagerly, pulling him into the eerie darkness. The beam moves upwards, circling and spreading over the sky until the light of the moon can no longer be seen. It shades over us and portates once as far as the eye can see, my head rumbles and shakes ever so subtly. My thoughts start to become cloudier as he saves us from this turgent hell that is our puny mortality. No, 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 no! His will shall be known all across the country of Artunia. Praise and be merry for his coming is nigh. No, his! Please, Will, I, is, don't, just, want, and, this, good. May Lord try a reign, my Lord try a reign, my Lord try a reign. Oh, I found the evil ending. Well, if we want to try and get him to stop casting the spell, maybe we could say that uh, it was our mistake. It was wrong of me to believe a student could be trusted with such power. I'm sorry, Kellum. I cannot bear to look Kellum in the eyes, barely able to imagine the amount of anguish and sorrow he has had to endure. No, Professor Lotelia, please. There's no need to blame yourself for this. No one could have expected such an outcome. I also wonder then, if the detectives attitude will affect the endings. So what if we suspect him rather than accuse him? Tell me, why would a grade A student like yourself need the legal tech such as a skill improvement guide? I'm not as great of a student as I may appear. Detective, truth be told, I needed it to stay afloat with my colleagues. I'm not in nearly the same league as them. Wait, how did you... A hex of truth saying. And I didn't even notice until now. Clever plan, detective. Okay, now let's suspect about the Book of the Dark Arts. Comes with practice and hard work. Something you ought to look into. Second, what little novel of yours, the one on dark magics and forbidden arts? Why do you have it? Please, don't blame me. I needed something spectacular for my final Grand Scholar presentation, so I took it. I thought I could repurpose a spell made by Calpurnia herself. As in Calpurnia, the Zert of Artunia, the revolutionary that nearly destroyed our great nation, you attempted to recast one of her spells for a glorified talent show? Kellum doesn't say anything, but he flinches. His pride obviously hurting from the accusatory tone of the detective. Well then, based on what I gathered, there can really be only one conclusion to all of this. Callum Trier, I need to bring you in for further questioning. Please, come with me now. Well, even if only suspecting, the detective still dies. I wonder if there's actually an ending where everybody lives. I... Thank you for saving me, Professor Lotalia. 
that this was unjust on all accords. I shouldn't have killed that man. He, he didn't deserve to die for my mistakes. It's my fault he's dead. It's my fault these poor people have been enthralled. Oh, seven divines. This was never supposed to happen. Callum is gripping his head. Something tears as he realizes the full extent of his actions. I walk up to him and try to console the shaken student with, No! Don't touch me! I don't deserve kindness or sympathy! Oh! So us not accusing him has made him less insane? I'm a damn freak! A monster who dabbled with magic far outside his realm of expertise! And for what? A better grade? A stupid title no one gives a damn about! What was this all for? Why did I make so many people suffer? You can still fix this. Fix everything! No, Professor Latalia. I can maybe fix the enthrallment, but not everything else. I can't. It's too much. Thank you, Professor. I, I appreciate everything you taught me. Callum gives one more cheerful smile before running straight into the red bee, diving in before I can try to stop him. The spell starts to crackle, barely holding its shape together and falling apart at the seams. Booms can be heard emanating from its base, jostling my bones to their core. Suddenly, a blast of white suddenly erupts from the base. I'm awakened by the shaking of a strong hand against my shoulder. It's a student, seemingly just as dazed and confused as I am. I get my bearings and eventually sit upright, only to see a sea of equally confused and bewildered people surrounding me. The sponsors and alumni have seemingly left their stupor, finally autonomous and able to think again. Some of them hug and hold one another. Others cry, realizing the potential danger they were just in and relieved the realization that they're still alive. Yet with all the commotion, I don't see the one face that really matters, the one face I wanted to save. And no matter how hard I try, Kellum is nowhere to be seen. Oh, the martyr ending. Okay, so clearly like this end choice isn't gonna have an effect on our endings, right? Since it seems to be about whether we accuse him or support him from the earlier choices. So what would happen if we just tell him to end the spell? <laughs> choice in the matter. With that, Kellum pulls out his wand and utters a single phrase, almost as a whisper. Oh, I see. So even if we tell him to stop, he will rule the world regardless. Alright then, let's see if we can actually save everybody's life. I believed that he could control the spell. My trust in him has yet to waver. I say, wholeheartedly believing that Kellum would be able to finish his presentation with a peaceful outcome. In the red light of the Crimson Beacon, Kellum's face seems to grow just a shade redder. Okay, so Detective, how about you simply just question him about the skill improvement? Firstly, why do you have a skill improvement sand edition guide proudly displayed for all to see? I don't know who you are, Detective. But that book was never meant for my personal usage. I... I was giving out lessons to my underlings. I found one of them cheating and held on to it for safekeeping. Wait, how did you... A hex of truth saying. And I didn't even notice it until now. Clever plan, detective. Oh, so our attitude towards Kellen actually influences what the truth is then. So because we're being nice and simply questioning him about it, he is innocent? I suppose that is how we get our everyone lives ending. I ain't one to be underestimated. Now, you want to explain that book and the dark arts you have? That one about transformations. Please, don't blame me. 
It was given to me by a close friend. We thought we could change the world by finally cracking the code for one of Calpurnia's spells. And in Calpurnia, the deserter of Altunia, the revolutionary that nearly destroyed our great nation. Let me guess, I was the one that gave him the book. Kit, you obviously got yourself into more than you bargained for. This whole little event you should have never happened in the first place. Come on, let's figure out just how the hell we need to stop this beam of yours and help save all those poor saps. Kellum's face floods with relief, knowing that he's now in safe hands. His demeanor gets notably lax. The detective turns to face me, and the kindness in his eyes disappears for a moment. Don't think my kindness extends to you, however. Amnesia or not, you still have plenty of explaining to do. Giving a book of that magnitude to a damn college student? What were you thinking? Detective Corvus shakes his head in disapproval, but motions me to come along. I don't bother trying to argue with him, as the guilt still eats away at me. I soon spend hours studying the incantation as Kellum and the detective start herding the enthralled to safe areas of the campus. I try to find out what exactly went wrong, but frankly, Kellum's incantation is down near perfect. I breathe a sigh of relief, realizing that the way to fix everything is spelled out for us. All that's needed is a long anti-magical seance to be performed. A constant chanting that can surely save everyone affected. Kellum, Detective Corvus and I begin chanting the proper rites. We go for hours, but time seems to speed quickly by. All three of us continuing in perfect harmony. It could easily be described as glorious if it weren't for all the lives on the line and the stakes at hand. By the crack of dawn, the beam becomes noticeably smaller coming more and more quietly, disappearing. Then we start to hear the bodies, each one falling down one by one, no doubt exhausted by the mind control. Soon enough, the beam dissipated. Just as soon as Detective Corpse's reinforcements managed to arrive, and not a second too soon. I'm beat. Can't go the rest of my life and I need to say, who moaner, mouth talk, Abby Luncornia, ever again. He gives a pat to the shoulder of Kellum. You take care of yourself, Grand Scholar. I best not be seeing you creating any more vips in the sky, or none of that from now on. I'll, um, do my best to make you proud, Detective. That's what I like to hear. Stay out of trouble by not trying to cause any in the first place. And now, on to you. Don't think that this will be the last time I busy you, Professor Lotelia. Your memory loss is likely in need of addressing, but I know a guy. They can help you get things straightened out. Will be the first time I've dealt with amnesia cases before, speaking from first-hand experience. With that, the detective quickly shapeshifts into his Avon form, taking a position with his murder. His cores nearly non-stop, likely updating them all on the nights he's had. Kellum turns to face me. He looks miserable and exhausted, but most of all relieved. Well, Professor, there isn't really an easy way to say this, but here it goes. What in all the seven divides were you thinking, entrusting me with such an assignment? The wasted hours spent studying Calpurnia's different texts and notes on top of the utter carelessness with trusting someone like me with forbidden knowledge. I could have blown up the school, or gone mad with power, or worse. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't appreciate the opportunity. It really meant a lot to me that you'd entrust such information to someone like me. So thank you. I mean... It all went to hell, and we're gonna have to figure out a way to restore your memory, along with anything else that may have gone wrong because of this explosion. But hey, it's a new day. That's plenty of time to correct the mistakes of the past. 
or to hopefully make for a better future. On that, I couldn't have agreed more. There's a good ending. I really did manage to keep everyone alive. Do you reckon it makes me a good teacher or a bad one? That I managed to make one of my students into an evil overlord? I regret nothing. If you enjoyed that playthrough, I'd really appreciate you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. But other than that, you're a spooky day and I'll catch you next time, guys.